Welcome to His Way at Home, episode four. four. And today we are just coming off our national day of prayer. So what do you think we're gonna be talking about? Prayer. So let's get started. <music> very best friend and answer these really quick questions. We're going to find out how much you know about them. someone that you trust, you talk to often, um, they bring you a sense of joy and happiness, and you can always get some good advice from a best friend, because you know they're going to be honest with you. Yeah. And what if you stop communicating with that person? Well, it's a struggle, and you would grow apart, right. and so your friendship wouldn't be as best as it could. And there's struggle. a beautiful comparison of our friendship and our relationship to God. And that just like your friends, you need to cultivate that relationship. You definitely have to work on it. Mm -hmm. And that's, how do we do that? It's through with prayer. prayer. Mm -hmm. And a relationship with God should come just as natural as having a best friend. That's right. That's right. And uh, some of us are going to struggle with that, but there's really great practical ways mm -hmm. that we can learn to pray and really grow, grow close to the Lord. So here is a quick five minute clip from one of our favorite national speakers. He's very quirky and goofy. <laughs> He's so much fun. He'll make you laugh, and it's Chris Padgett. And, and he lives in North Side of Syracuse. He's our guy. Yeah, so he's a local. Enjoy. You caught me doing something handsome, didn't you? I'm not surprised. <laughs> There's a lot of things in our life that we need. Vitamins, water, oxygen. But one of the things that we need probably most, we don't talk about it a lot, is prayer. Today I want to talk to you about prayer. What is it? And how do we pray? And why is it such a great need in our life? Anyway, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. I'm just gonna sunbathe a little bit more. Get a little bit of vitamin D soaking in my pores. Oh, bloom, dang it. Bloom, you flower. Bloom. Do what God made you to do. I see you caught me caring about nature again. I'm not surprised. Every living thing needs water. Without water, we die. Sometimes you can go a couple days without water, but you get sicker and sicker and eventually the dehydration, it can kill you. Prayer is like water. It's what renews us and rejuvenates us. It helps to keep us alive. And what you were made for and what I was made for was to bloom, was to be alive in Christ. God made us in such a way so that we could communicate with him, know him, love him. If you're struggling in your walk with God, it's very probable because you're struggling in your prayer life. But what is prayer? There's so many weird ideas that people have about prayer. Uh, sometimes they think it's all about a funny language. Lordeth, thoueth, knoweth, alleth, thingseth, pleaseth, helpeth me with, with my lithpeth. It's not like that. Prayer is a dialogue. It's communicating. Every relationship that you're in involves some form of communication for it to grow. You have a parental relationship, friends, other relational structures. If you're not talking to one another, there's going to be misunderstandings. And eventually, and sometimes in those relationships, you can you can see a relationship fold and die. God wants to talk to us. He wants to share beautiful things with us and he wants us to share our life with him. It's what we need. I remember when I was younger, I used to take these long walks and I would go and say, Jesus, on the way out, I'll talk to you and I would share all the things in my life that I was struggling with. And then I'd say on the way back, Lord, you can talk to me. Because prayer isn't just us talking to God, it's about us hearing him as well. He wants to speak to you. I dare you, give it a go. See what happens when you start to pray. I bet your life is going to blossom and bloom in a way that you never thought possible. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a leg model. 
Well, one of the favorite things that I like to do for prayer is to, is to pray the rosary. And John Paul II called the rosary a compendium of the gospel. In other words, when you meditate on those mysteries, you learn so much about your faith through the eyes of Our Lady. You can look at novenas. All sorts of saints and their love for Christ had a unique approach to a relationship with God that we savor and that we appreciate, that we value. Doing novenas, um, looking at the lives of the saints, we realize that there's not just one way to love and live for God. It's without end. And you are called to be a saint, and prayer enables you to be a saint. Sometimes, I remember when I was younger, I used to just listen to praise and worship music. I would just sit and I would lift up my hands and I would pray, I would sing the songs. And in a way, that's kind of a little bit like when St. Augustine said that he who sings praise twice. So you have so many different ways to pray. You can journal after you read spiritual writings. You can go to adoration and kneel before Jesus in the Eucharist. Really, it's, it's your choice. You know, what resonates with you? And, uh, and you can find beauty in knowing that God is listening. I'm so ready to be weightless. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do for you is I want to show you a little bit of an example. You want to see how long I can hold my breath under the water? Here we go. <gasps> how long? How long was I under? Here's the truth. You and I, we need prayer. It's our oxygen. If I were to go under the water and try to breathe this in, I wouldn't. I don't have gills. Okay? But the thing is, is if you and I decide that we want to grow in our relationship with God, we need the oxygen of that relationship, that oxygen, is prayer. A lot of times you and I, sometimes I think, I think that we get so easily distracted. There's a lot of gadgets, a lot of gizmos, a lot of things in this world that keep us from prayer. But God is constantly inviting us to breathe in the beauty of what it means to be in a relationship with Him. It's probably not gonna be easy, but the more that you pray, the more that you'll develop a habit. And having a habit of holiness, that's the way to go. I promise you this, while maybe it's fun to go underwater for a little while, you can't live that way. And you and I, we've all experienced a variety of things. Sometimes there are fun things that we do that are great, but they don't bring us true happiness, true life. God is going to show us what it means to live. The more that we pray, the more we are tapped into his heart. I encourage you, you know, breathe deep. Enjoy the gift that God has given you in this relationship with him. I'm going to try this one more time. <gasps> So we want to talk to you today about how to improve your prayer life on a daily basis. And so a conversation is listening and talking. And that's how you want to pray, right. listening and talking. Exactly. And the simple way to remember it is the word X, A-C-T-S. The first one is A, adore. Begin your prayer time with your eyes and your hearts focused on God. Be still in his presence because God is awesome. And if you start your prayer asking for things, you struggle. And it gets you stuck in this negative, stressful state. And you're forgetting about God's amazing grace. Just reflect on God's goodness and generosity. The second one is C, contrition. Realizing that we're not perfect and that we do need to say we're sorry. And it's looking into your heart and knowing that you are sinful and need forgiveness and are asking for help. And the key to this is to not be afraid to talk to God. Just like we're not afraid to talk to our friends we, and to truly realize their unconditional love for us. And to be able to move forward, we need to realize that we do make mistakes. The third one is T. Thanksgiving. Acknowledge your blessings. Life isn't always perfect, but we actually have to acknowledge all of the good things that God has placed in our lives. Right. Whether it be loving family, food on the table, all of our gifts and talents, our home. And we just need to thank God for those people and things that he's placed in our lives. The last one is S. Supplication. And that is the, mo the one that comes the most natural to us humans, and that's just asking for things. Oh, yeah. In prayer, we ask God for things that are physical, mental, 
spiritual and emotional today for tomorrow and for next year and so on and to ask God to answer the needs of others our church and the whole world so each day we encourage you to focus your prayer around X our acronym a adore C contrition T Thanksgiving and S supplication yeah prayer is just a conversation with God which is listening and talking and listening again and your relationship with him will flourish so you can live your very best life in God's eyes. Get set, because here's another challenge. Okay, so we are challenging you for 30 days to pray. And now it's a special way to pray. And so all you need is a jar, some strips of paper, and something to write with. And we encourage you to get fancy and decorate your jar. But what you're going to do is below there's an image. And each day it's going to give you something special to pray about. You're going to write that on a piece of paper and pray for it and put it in the jar. And fill your jar full. And make sure you get a clear jar so you can see your prayer progress. Happy praying. Good luck. Thank you so much again for joining us. We just want you to know that there are so many unique ways to pray and that we just wanted to help you focus your prayers on our ACTS acronym and improve your prayer life and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So see below our 30 day challenge as well as our dinner dialogue questions and dive deeper resources into prayer. And don't forget prayer changes things. See you next week.